Hello and welcome back. OK, so here's my UART. In the last video, we added the receive FIFO, which gave us a bit of extra functionality. If I send it some characters, so that was eight characters for the letters A through H. So that fills the buffer up. And I can read the characters back out by pushing this button, which is wired to the read line. So that was the numbers one through eight. So that's filled up. Now I can read it back out by pushing this button to the read line. You see each character come out in turn on the LEDs here. That's cool. So what I want to do is start looking at getting the transmit FIFO wired in, which is going to be slightly more complex but also getting this back into a position where I can interface it directly to the CPU. Now I've got these control lines kind of arbitrarily wired in at the moment. We've got the status split between old and new bits of circuit. Here's the manifestation of the main bus. And I've got the control lines to the CPU which are bypassed at the moment. So I want to rework this circuit a bit get a piece of breadboard that I plug these into to interface and then uh, start doing some work. This green line I've got wired into reset. I'm just going to fix that to 5 volts for now. I haven't needed to use it much. That's the read. So here's the existing read line from the CPU, and that connects to one of the inputs on this set reset latch. So that's a reminder that this set reset latch was basically just holding the state of whether or not we had a byte that we've received, so the read would reset it. So this side of the SR latch is just not necessary anymore, so we can save some lines. Here's where I hardwired the read. Okay, it's not going to reach all the way. So we should be able to take power and ground off here to power this circuit. So if we keep this button as the read, it's there. If we make this button the right signal. We know this button's a little bit uh, bouncy, so I'm going to use that one for the, the status readback. I'm going to steal this bus line. OK, that seems to be working. I'm getting some occasional glitches due to, I think, dodgy breadboard wires. So this old status chip isn't really needed. OK, so this looks like I'm connecting up to the SR latch, but I'm actually just picking up this line. So that's right when a byte's received, triggers this to take a byte in and increment the total. So and this is the status bit output from the set reset latch. So this LED is just saying there's a byte available and that was previously going off to the status register. We don't need that anymore because we've got the full count coming over here. So actually, this output line is actually that information. So I can pull the rest of the wires for this SR latch out. It's possible these spare gates will come in handy. Okay, let's send it a couple of characters again. So we've got two bytes in the buffer and yeah, so that's the status byte coming back out. We just got those four lines coming out here. We're going to want the four lines coming out of this buffer as well. And that's long enough to do it. Right, so if this button is the transmit, we want to wire it into the load here, which is that one. 
Now at the moment the load line is going into this edge detection circuit which then sets the transmit state on the set reset latch here. We're going to have to rework that. I don't like switching colours on that line. That'll do. Okay, so now we can increment the data stored in here. Okay, so it used to be that the transmit circuit was reading its data from these lines here, which were connected to the main bus, because the value was asserted onto the bus as we were going to send it. But in actual fact, now it needs to be the read lines out of the back of the buffer. But we no longer have anything else connected up over here, so we can just plug those in. I've made up large numbers of these DuPont cables, but um, I've got lots of different bits of build on the go at the moment. Okay, that should be making that connection. This will be easier if we can see what the output is here. I do need to avoid old wires in here. Makes it less easy to understand. So this is just a set of LEDs on the output lines from this transmit buffer, just so we can see what data is being presented on these wires. Right, so if I change this to assert and then press the transmit button, yes, we've got one byte in the transmit buffer, one byte there. That's cool. Because the transmit's not happening, all of this circuitry is now redundant, and we've completely broken the transmit. Because rather than an edge detected signal to send a byte, which was directly triggering the load onto the shift register, what we're going to need is a circuit that says, if we're not sending a byte and there's a byte available, load it into these inputs of the shift register and shift it out. And so the two significant bits of this circuit is detecting if a byte is waiting and not triggering whatever that's doing while we're still transmitting. So let's deal with the, is there a byte waiting first? So these four lines are a binary value for how many bytes are in the buffer. And we just need to see if that's non-zero. Okay, so this is a 74LS32. That's four OR gates. Now I've put this gate here just because I've already transferred the four outputs from this right over here. You can pick those four lines up there. And I'm going to send pairs of them into the inputs from to the OR gates here. And I take the two outputs from those OR gates as the inputs to another one. And then this should be all of those results all together. I need some really long cables. If anyone knows where I can get pre-made ones, let me know. Okay, so this value is currently non-zero, so it's on. Let's reset. It's gone off. Let's uh, queue a byte. So I effectively pressed the transmit button more times and it's actually valid because this is showing a value more than eight. But let's wrap it round and yeah, that works. All right, that's good. Now we can get rid of this edge detection circuit. I must admit, it never feels particularly satisfactory when I use inverters to delay like that. Now the transmit counter, that was kind of problematic in that I used a increment and then I used the, the carry to roll it over and put the set reset latch back into the ready to send state. So it counted 16 bits and a frame for sending isn't 16 bits, it's 10 bits. So I want to rework this slightly. Okay, what I could do is actually use the increment line and use parallel load to initialize it to a non-zero value such that it then caps out after the 10 ticks. I think that's going to be easier from a wiring perspective. It doesn't really make any difference to us. Now to get 10 ticks before the carry, we need to initialize this to six. That's two. And 
and then four is here. Might need to adjust this once we finish the circuit. If we get this to work right, we'll actually get a faster transmit rate than we had before, because we had some dead time on the line. Okay, I'm just going to bring that clear line low for now. Need to work out what I'm doing with that. So we're triggering the reset input on the carry. That's what we want. We have a set input that determines that we are going to switch from not sending to sending state. Now that's going to want to come from this all together set of uh, the data count. I'm going to get the oscilloscope set up and we'll take a look at what we've currently got. Let's take a look at the clock as well. I haven't got the parallel load signal going anywhere. That's why it was unstable. Right, so that's the carry signal. That's the clock signal driving it. So as expected, we've got 16 ticks between. So if I drive the parallel load line directly from the carry, we get nine ticks in between but that carry signal becomes infinitesimally small and that's going to be difficult to reliably drive and have a signal off. All right, so I'm going to take an odd together signal that says there is a byte available to be sent. Let's wire that back into the LED for now. So there we go, we've got a byte ready. So that's come on, so we've got a one going into this side of the AND gate. I want to take the clock signal. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so the idea here is if I use this to set the set reset latch, it will only get set when there's a byte ready to be sent. So I shouldn't be getting a half signal at that on the purple trace. Okay, so that's the signal we wanted. We get the count. So we get 10 ticks for each carry. Only happens when we've got data to send don't like how low that purple line is. Oh, it's just stupid. I've nudged the um, scale. Okay, so now let's see if we can make this data actually send. Pin 1 is the shift slash load. Let's take a look at the data out. That's more like it. That makes sense actually. The shift slash load is getting the same signal as the parallel load on the counter. And what's the binary code for, say, an A? Let's put that in there. Well, that does not look right. Okay, so I've extended the frame slightly. And let's stabilize the output on the UART. So the start bit, least significant bit. 
four zeros. Oh, hang on. Ah. That's not right. We're not getting the right output out of the FIFO. Look at that. One of my pins is off. Put that back to A. Send it. Got some bounce on that button. Finally, we're getting the lowercase a we wanted. Okay, this is actually promising. The pr big problem we've got now is the byte stays and we need to remove it. But the signal on the yellow trace goes high when we finish sending. So basically, that is exactly what needs to be fed into the read. Right, so there's the data read line. I think this just needs to connect into this location where the yellow line comes from. All right. That was output enable. That's a read. Okay, so I'm sending a character on depression and release. Let's try swapping these over. Yeah, it's just this button is bouncing. Right, this feels like it's working. Thought this was going to be a slightly easier circuit, so I was kind of making it up as I went along. I think we've got a working circuit there. And the only way to be sure about that is if we plug it into the CPU, fix the code and make it work. But there's something else. I put the line driver in here and the idea is to output the data containing the counts from the two FIFOs onto the bus on demand. So we do a status read and the count comes out on the bus when we select it. But I've been worried about this because I've got, I believe, a flaw in the circuit. And that's asking the question, what happens if a byte is received or finishes transmit during the read of that circuit? This would change the signal being asserted on the bus midway through the load operation. And that's really not good. So instead of a 541 line driver, I'm going to use a 574 D-type latch chip. So I've moved this along one space so that the output still line up with these bus lines. Give it power and ground. I'm putting the read count in the bottom half. Transmit count in the top half. And now the only issue we have is the copy line for this latch chip, which is right there. So my thinking for the copy line is if we take it as the inverse of the read line. Now if you think about what this is going to mean, because the copy will happen on the rising edge, the moment we go to read the data, which is these two counts, the assert line will go low, so the copy line will go high and we will fix the data we're reading at that instant in time. So that, that behavior is going to work OK. Right, we've got a circuit that I think is behaving correctly. So I'm going to get the CPU out and we're going to see if we can wire it back in. So I've got the CPU back out. Now, the current ROM in here is the LCD version of the Primes code. So that runs away quite happily. It's uh, kind of limited on the formatting because of the 20 characters wide LCD. And if I run this at full speed, it goes through quite quickly. So we're at 20,000, 
30, 40, and there we go. So it's finished. But most of that time is actually it waiting for the LCD. We're currently clocked at one megahertz and the UART version was a similar-ish speed. Now we've changed the format for control output. We're now outputting two 4-bit counts from the FIFO buffers. So we are going to need to update the code. Okay, so how do we determine if we can write? So if there's less than eight bytes in the write buffer, we can write. The write buffer is the top four bits. Actually, just shift right by one and loop back on ourselves if that bit is set. That was easy. Okay, gonna need to update this function. This is not used by the current code though. This is looking for any character. So we're gonna need a second variable. So that's the bottom four bits, which is the number of bytes that can be read. So if the result of the and is zero, there's no character waiting. Getting that comments wrong. Don't think we need this second part of the loop anymore. Left myself an interesting comment there. Okay, so this first loop in the wait any key is actually reading any data in the input buffer. Then this loops till there is a byte and reads it. Oh, I see, so this is just looping to empty the buffer again. Now the old UART could never have more than one byte in the buffer at a time. But by the looks of this comment, when I wrote this code, I was having a problem with it not clearing immediately by the time I read here. But now we might have the same problem because some keys will send more than one character, which will all go into the buffer. So it's worth keeping this uh, code the same. That's not looking very promising. Okay, so we're getting a lot of the correct characters out, but it's obviously not right. Okay, let's write a simplified piece of test code. I've just immediately realized an issue. All of these shift rights should be shift lefts because it's the top bit we're interested in. Okay, so we're getting the correct string out it looks like we're getting odd weird replications of it. So my guess is our logic for only sending the characters in the buffer isn't working correctly.
Okay, you're not going to believe this. Okay, I spent about an hour just trying to diagnose it. I lost some of the footage due to the camera running out of memory. But the problem wasn't the circuit. I determined I could trigger the problem just by brushing the wires down in this area. And then when I poked it around a bit more, it wasn't anything to do with the new circuit. It was actually the power and ground lines. So I've added a little bit of extra tying of the, the ground together and it's stable. Let's run it at high speed. Okay, that is substantially quicker than we've seen the primes run before. And the reason for that is, of course, that in this code, we convert the numbers to the ASCII representation using lots of um, division and modulus operations. And then we were previously outputting it one byte at a time and waiting for the UART to send it or the LCD to process it each time. Whereas now, we output all the characters very rapidly, filling the output buffer, and then that's continuing to send it while we're calculating the next value. Okay, that's really cool. Okay, this was a bit of a struggle. I've got no idea the length of the video this is going to uh, edit down to, but I'm actually really pleased with this because the circuit as envisaged did work. There was just a tricky little bits of messing around getting the values to increment properly, and there was a little bit of software debugging, and that was all hidden by the fact that uh, we had some loose wires on this breadboard. But now we've got a UART that works exactly as envisaged, and the only thing left to do is to convert that to a PCB where we won't have to worry about the loose wires anymore. Okay, well, I hope you found this interesting. It was a bit painful, but we got there in the end. I'm very, very keen on getting this onto a PCB now so we can have a stable UART to enable some communication to and from the PC and we can start doing some more interesting stuff with it. Okay, hope you found it interesting. See you again soon. Goodbye.